No, it's not Monday, it's Friday. I usually do my lives on Monday, but I said, uh, what the heck, we're just going to go ahead and do a live on Friday. We'll see if anybody tunes in. Hope everybody had a good work week. Have some plans for the weekend, maybe. Looks like we might have one person watching, maybe two. I don't. I never know how these. Uh... Hey, Rocky, how's it going? There's Craig. Told you I was gonna go live, right? Kind of random, I guess. Floridians here. Adam, Ken Spear, checking in from Pittsburgh. I don't know if you guys are getting any weather. Holy cow, you guys might actually hear my furnace kick on. It's like, I don't know if it's going to get down to single digits or not. I just looked at the temp outside. It's in the uh, mid-teens right now where I'm at. Clayton from Watchdog Podcast is here. I, can I keep calling you the Watchdog Podcast? You haven't put out an um, episode in a little bit. But Hey, Dirk is here. Usually he's at his uh, second job, so that's cool to have Dirk here. Oh, speaking of Dirk. I have my uh, Dessert Warrior knife here because we're going to do some unboxings. Uh, Dirk sent this over. Uh, let's see, Multi-Arc, Robert, New Beast Channels here. Yeah, Craig, it is too cold up here. I'm definitely getting sick of it. And let's see, Bobby Legs is here. Yes, Clayton is going to put out another episode. Uh, Doug is here. What? Friday Live, yeah going to mix it up a little bit. I know a lot of people probably just just need to further immerse themselves into the um, hobby. Yeah, tell me about it. I could go for a donut too. That is pretty pretty sick knife. I like that. Slicey Dicey's here. Yeah, I'm going to do the unboxing. I want to get a few more people on before we do it, but yeah, Robert Arthur. This is Unexpected Treat, yes. Uh, why buy this? What a, what a name. Yeah, hey, Rob. He says, hey, Rob. Yep. We are hanging out. Good night from Trinidad. Kend Kendall's checking, checking in from Trinidad. That's, that's cool. Yeah, I was going to make a video. Um, but So here's the thing. Maybe you guys know this already because other uh, content creators have told you this. But usually... Uh, I'm still going to post a video every day, but um, I I and all content creators, for the most part, the ad revenue, the, your Google ad revenue, you know, the income that we get, is going to basically tank in January. Um, and that's just because the advertisers' budgets change, new year, they're just not paying out as much, all that good stuff. So it has nothing, nothing to do with channel algorithms or anything like that it's just the ad revenue goes down so um, a lot of content creators will die away back in January with their content um, I'm going to keep doing what I do I always have so new beast channels uh, all the way over in Indonesia that's awesome uh, wrist check sound off guys let me know yeah my furnace is about to kick on again hopefully it's not too loud for you guys but um Here's what I'm wearing. Actually, I've been wearing this Breitling Super Ocean 42 millimeter white dial ever since it arrived and I sized it. And uh, I've been wearing it even at work. I already have, uh, not so much on the clasp, but I actually have like a couple of micro scratches on the side of the case because I mean, I'm being, I'm trying to be slightly careful, but I'm not being like overly protective of it. So. Well, slicey dicey, that doesn't, the, the amount of views and everything we get, um, that really isn't changing too much. So that's not really where the, um, the ad revenue is going to be dictated by, you know, advertisers. And regardless of what's going on in the world, the advertisers, they, they have a budget, right? So the budget is going to get changed over. Uh, in the new year, so they dial they dial their advertising dollars way back. So there's really nothing anybody can do about it. Um, yeah, we're just joking about it, I guess. But um, so I guess in the meantime, what I'm gonna do is uh, I've been selling some watches in my uh, founders group. 
actually the the founders group is going really good i think we're at like close to 80 it's going to be capped at 100 and um it's at like 80 right now so uh why buy this is asking what's your thoughts on the seiko limited edition anime watches i think some of them actually look really cool i'm not going to buy any of them however i did buy the anime initial d uh g-shock so maybe if g-shock did anime well i only really bought it because one it's g-shock square and two initial d anime was like i that was awesome i was really into that so yeah nefarian i did go live yeah i had to i was wrapping up those lists and everything for the founders group and i had to do some other stuff uh, behind the scenes channel stuff and um Stuff like that. And then, yeah, I figured I'd go live and see if maybe if we can get like 100 people on, maybe I'll start unboxing some things. And um, Kevin S. is asking, does it wear small for a 42 millimeter? I thought the 44 millimeter seemed okay to me. So with Breitling, yeah, you're 100% uh, correct on that. So um, this is wearing really good for me. And I think that's partly because typically white dial watches actually present a little bit larger on wrist anyway. So it kind of balances it back out yeah nefarian initial d i like had all of them and everything like that so but when i was talking to craig about this yeah tennessee mike no it's friday we're we're uh doing a random live i guess so if you look at these basically the same size watch right 42 by 50 basically and i mean you guys can see this hopefully i mean i can see it the seamaster looks larger and to a certain extent, I think that's because you have more white dial. So it is technically larger to the naked eye because that's what you're focused on, whereas the Breitling has a smaller area there. Um, plus that metal, I think that metal ring separating the bezel and the crystal has uh, part of the... Um, uh, illusion going on there so yeah the Seamaster looks bigger it's actually gonna it's gonna look bigger on wrist and everything but they're the same size watch the Breitling Super Ocean 42 millimeter on my seven and a quarter seven and eighth inch wrist something like that wears uh spectacular like and I don't want to take anything away from the Seamaster hey Bobby Legs appreciate that super chat five dollars that's awesome best in 2021 we're gonna we're going to do 2021 the way we want to do it, right? So I'm looking forward to it as well. Um, and I, so I absolutely love the Seamaster, and uh, I hope to uh, keep it for a long time. But I will say this. For somebody that's only considering one of these, and you're in a toss-up, and you have a wrist size similar to me, and you kind of like the same kind of watches as I do, you could buy the Breitling Super Ocean, save yourself some money, and actually get it, because I think you can get the White Dial ones, whereas the Seamaster White Dial right now is impossible to find. I think you could buy the Super Ocean and move on. Like, it easily... Hey, Robert Arthur with the Super Chat, $6. That's awesome. I appreciate that. Very helpful. Um, so I guess my point being... The Breitling Super Ocean 42 millimeter white dial is freaking awesome. And uh, it, in some ways, kind of trumps the Seamaster. Now, don't, don't get it twisted. The Seamaster's not going anywhere. I still love that watch. It's sticking around and everything like that. But, wow, this, this watch, I knew it was going to be awesome when I studied it, watched all the videos, read all the articles. Rock the Watch actually helped out a lot with that. Um... <laughs> I'm not getting rid of that. 100% not getting rid of that. I bought that at a good deal. I love wearing that watch. Um, and I like everything that is uh, about it. So, But what I'm saying is for the people that... Because these are expensive watches, right? There's no getting around that. Um, and I can tell you about what I paid for them, but really the degree of separation is a thousand dollars and you're already talking multiple of thousand dollars on each one of them right so if you can buy for example if you can buy the Breitling for three thousand and the Seamaster's four thousand and you were already at a stretch to even get to the three thousand dollars on this guy I say go for it and I usually don't say that um, they, they don't really compete with one another other than 
you know, they're white dialed divers. So they're not similar. It's not like this is replacing that. I'm just saying that this thing is freaking awesome. I don't know what else to say, I guess. Yeah, I think pretty much all, most of the people that I talk to on a regular basis all are looking at the Breitling Super Ocean as well. This this new model, and there's a few color, well, Craig's actually running into this because Craig has a little bit larger wrist. He has like seven and a half inch wrist, and he's kind of running into this. I think the 44 millimeter actually is gonna work better for Craig because I could even wear the 44, but the white dial is only available in the 42. So it's that case where we'll see what, we'll see, we'll see what Breitling does. Um, yeah, or the orange dial. Craig's actually looking at the orange dial. So in the 42, what is it? White dial, blue dial, and orange dial. There's not a whole lot of color combinations and then they jump and then, then the, 40, the 44, I think you can get a yellow dial and I don't, I don't know, maybe a blue or a black or something. I can't remember. They don't have all the colors in all the different sizes, oddly enough. Um, but they have such a large catalog. Maybe that's, they don't want to just stretch too thin. I find it a little weird because, they, I mean, the, the marketing departments and the sales departments over at Breitling, they have to know that this new model of Super Ocean is going to sell really good. I suspect it is. I know we all like it, right? Oh, yeah, I forgot about the green one, too. Thanks, Craig. Yeah, they have like a, I don't know if it's a special or limited edition, but they have a 44 millimeter green dial one. I do like that one. Um, but if I were going to go 44, I'd probably have to go with the yellow dial. Um, in the 42, I kind of tossed up a little bit. I even looked at that the orange dial a lot. But I'm all about these white dials. I'm loving the white dial. Actually, I was talking to James and Sons, a sales lady over at James and Sons. Um, they're the, they're an authorized dealer for like Tudor and Rolex and everything like that. They're down in Chicago. I was talking to her today, and I, I asked her if I could uh, get on some sort of list for the um, Rolex Explorer Two white dial. I'm um, I'm a ways away from that, but. If, if they're going to offer me to get on a list and I don't have to wait but maybe a year or something like that, maybe I would consider putting half down or something, whatever. I don't know how all their stuff works. So I would consider getting that watch and then have a, a pretty stellar white dial watch collection. I'm, uh, I'm really digging the white dials for some reason. All right. Did, I, did you guys uh, sound off what you're wearing tonight? What watches you're wearing? So many great established brands, even micro brands. Kevin S., yeah, this is a killer time to be uh, in the watch game, that's for sure. And I I just recently just kind of like a little flip uh, clicked over in my head, a little switch flipped over in my head there that I am uh, kind of going upscale a little bit. So Young XLNC is wearing the Zen 856. That is such a good watch. That is a good, good watch. Craig, um, a white dial explorer GMT. Yeah, so I, I 100% have been lusting for over a year now on the Rolex Explorer 2 polar dial, the uh, current generation one, the 42 millimeter. So, uh, CMO is wearing the Swiss watch company USA bunker. This guy right here, that's what he is wearing. Uh, Kevin S. is wearing the Black Bay, the Tudor, or, or no, we're not going to call it Tudor, right? We're going to call it the Black Bay Watch Company, uh, the model Black Bay 58 in blue tonight. That is awesome. So for you, I will put out my Tudor Black Bay 41 blue dial. Go ahead and put that out there. Uh, Aquas on the left, the Maratak. Titanium on the right. Wow, Nefarian. I, I can't compete with that. I, I sent that Oris Aquas back that Oris sent over, and they just sent me a tracking number. Oris is sending me three watches. They're sending me the Titanium Oris Aquas and two other watches. I'm not going to tell you. I'll have to wait till they show up. They're pretty cool. Joe is wearing his Christopher Ward C60 Sapphire. That's awesome. Desmond, I didn't know you had a, a Black Bay P01. That is sick. I want to see one of those eventually. Maybe I'll have to uh, beg that out of you. 
Um, Matthew's rocking the 5600 35th anniversary G-Shock. That's awesome. David says, don't forget to thumbs up the video. Or you can thumbs, if you really hate the video, you could thumbs down it twice. That would show how much you hate it. Chris Ward just came in the mail today. MJ, that's awesome. And Design is wearing his uh, white DW5600 custom Gundam parts mod. Uh, not 100% sure what that is, but I can throw this out in uh, honor of that. Uh, Nilo's wearing his Archimedia Outdoor 41. That is a really cool watch. I forgot about that. I've had one of those on the channel. That is really cool. David Curtis says, Tudor unboxing. No, uh, next week. It's not here yet. How about a white dialed Milgauss? You know what, Kevin? I don't think I like the Milgauss. I don't know. Call me crazy. Uh, it just seems like it's the not the not the design of it, but I just don't like the balance of the entire watch, like the polishing and how thick the case is, and then I don't know. It's just I'm not feeling it. Dustin's wearing a Seiko Solar Tuna. I don't have a Solar Tuna here, but I do have an SBBN Tuna here that I can put out in honor of that. And Yama LCD watch. Hold on, David. I can put out the Yama LCD watch because David's wearing that. Uh, let's see. Clayton's wearing his Grand Seiko. I don't have a Grand Seiko or anything close to that. I can't put that out. Uh, man, I got to back up here a little bit. Tank is rocking the Black Bay 41 blue, black dial. Uh, Stefan's rocking the Zellos Frost. Uh, let me grab a... Do I have a... I have a Zellos around here somewhere. Yep, I have the Zellos... Oh, dang it. I keep saying Zellos, guys. I'm so programmed to say Zellos. It's Zelos. I have the Zelos black tip there. I'll put that out. Uh, let's see... Uh, let's see. Steve's rocking a turtle. I don't have a turtle, but I have an SKX. So I'll go ahead and put an SKX out here. Um, you know what? Somebody, the couple people are wearing Zins. Let me grab. Let me grab a Zin. We're gonna toss the Zin 104 out here for all the Zin wearers out there. Let's see. Those Yama Digitals are pointlessly awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty much. He's wearing a Grand SKX Carbon Core Circuit Board. I can put that out there. Tennessee Mike's rocking his Carbon Core. Uh, ben says, got my old King Seiko on. Would be cool if you could review one of those. Need to get one sent in, and I definitely will check it out. Sean's rocking an MM200. I don't really have anything like that to put out. Uh, PG's rocking his Navitimer. That's awesome. Let's see. For Dane Zelos. I said it wrong, too, the first time. I'm sorry. Where's the super compressor? I sold it. I had to make some sacrifices. I'm going to make some more sacrifices here pretty soon. Slicey Dice has never had an SKX. Well... You might want to try one. I think you might like it. And if you don't, you can probably sell it. Uh, Squale 1545. You know, I actually do have a Squale still here, but it's not mine. And uh, honestly, I feel kind of bad, but I forgot who sent it to me. I need to look that up and get this back to the, to the person that sent it. So if you're watching, and this is your watch, and you sent it to me, and you're, and you're thinking, Rob, are you ever going to send me my watch back? Um, hit me up. So here is a Squale 1545. Or if you want to buy that, it's actually for sale. You could buy this 1545 root beer. Let's see. Seiko, oh, Seiko Captain Willard. I'm still waiting on Mimo to get the green Captain Willard in, and then I will pick that up. Thought you liked the super compressor. Listen, man, I like a lot of watches. I can't own them all. Sacrifices had to be made to get the Super Ocean. S sacrifices had to be made to buy a couple of watches I already have coming in. So, 
Uh, Michael's wearing the Certina, Certina DS PH 200 meter blue ceramic. That watch looks awesome, by the way. Explorer Mark II Titanium SKX mod. Oh, Escape Minute Watch did that Titanium SKX mod. I can't put mine out because I loaned it out to my buddy Jack. Um, somebody's wearing a uh, the Monster knockoff. I've, I don't know how to say that. That one starts with an H. But I'll put I'll put my Seiko Monster out because it's the it's the real deal. We'll go ahead and put that out. I think I covered some of the bases. Warrior of Light is asking, how's the bunker? Will you sell it? Nah, not right now. I don't think I will. Uh, Steve Simon says, Simmons says, I think I'm in the market for a green diver. Any suggestions? Uh, depends on if you want bright green. If you want bright green, there's uh, tons of like homage style watches out there, or there's even some authentic or, you know, like original designs like the Oris Hulk or something like that. If you want a darker green, I would definitely look at the Willard. Uh, Seiko Willard. Uh, let's see. Frederick says their bunker is coming back. Yeah, they're gonna they're dropping more. So we have 144 people on here. So I can um I can open up this box. This box was sent in. It's hard to open things up with uh, all these watches on the table. This watch was sent in by Chris from the Watch Lounge. You guys know Chris, right? And this is a another really fun Timex. This is a Timex. There's the part number. This is, um, oh, you know what? I know I said I stopped drinking, but have you guys ever tried this? I picked some of this up while I was down in Florida, and I have a couple left. I'm just, I can't throw them away. I'm just going to drink them. So I think it's called Yangling. Ooh, that tastes good. All right, so. Did I consider any other Breitling? I'm weirdly attracted to the Aerospace. Yes, Aerospace I'm actually even considering now, but um, they're having, um, Breitling is having a difficult time getting the components to build the Aerospace. So they're kind of not really in stock right now. So, so check out this killer looking Timex. It's called the Midget, and this is like a, uh, throwback or reproduction of um, an original design. This is, I just opened it up. This is my first look at it. This thing is spectacular. Oh, Craig, I didn't know they started selling it in Michigan. I, well, I haven't seen it up here. Maybe I'll have to, I'm going to come down and visit you, Craig. I think I'm going to come down and visit you and uh, we'll have a talk. Um, this thing is killer looking. I love it. it. This looks like a super old watch. I don't, think it is no it definitely isn't it's in the glow so it has the in the glow on it that this thing is just this thing is just cool hey terry's checking in um looks like an oris 1917 very cool i think it's a it's an old timex midget i think is what they were called so yeah it is it is jdm it was not a u.s release Slicey Dicey did a corporate show for, I don't know if I'm saying it right, it's probably Yongling, and I'm calling it Yingling, <laughs> it's probably Yongling. Uh, that Timex is kind of awesome, I have checked out a couple times, don't see many trench watch, yeah. And it has like real wire lugs instead of uh, like the kind of wire simulated um, lugs that a lot of Timex have, like the Weekender and stuff. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's smaller, I think. I was just scrolling back on some comments. Oh, it is Yingling. Okay. Somebody told me it was Yingling, but if you look at the spelling, I'm like, it looks like Yongling or something? I don't know. It's pretty good. It's all right. For a Pilsner, I, I still, for a Pilsner, I think I prefer the um, that, that Czech beer. I forget what it's called. What's the movement in it? I don't know. It's probably some cheap Timex quartz movement. They didn't do. They didn't do a good movement in it, as far as I know. Have you tried the Lova against the Yama? Yeah, I did. I posted that video. I think Matthew, you have to look back. Oldest brewery in uh, America. Yeah, I think they uh, hold that claim. That is for sure. 
Yes, Kevin, that. The Pilsner or, or your whatever. I don't know how to pronounce this stuff. Uh, let's see. David says, I have a Tudor Black Bay 41. Sometimes I feel like selling all other watches. It just works so well with every situation. I agree. It's an awesome watch for sure. Yeah, Craig, that one, whatever it is. Plans for a wise. Sean, oh man, I was, uh, I sent out some emails. I sent out some feelers today for the Weiss uh, Ultralight. Um, those didn't pan out. And then I remembered how much it cost. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not going $2,800 into an Ultralight. So then I'm like, you know what? Maybe I'll just go over. I would have actually bought it today, Sean. Seriously, I would have bought it today. I went over to the Weiss. This was towards the end of my work day. I went over to the Weiss watch shop and I was going to buy the 42 millimeter blue dial because he put out that blue dial that I like a lot in the titanium. He put it out in the stainless steel. But I can't, you can't select it. Like it, the only thing you can select is the um, white dial or the black dial. So I would have bought it. I seriously would have bought it. So I sent them an email. We'll see what they say. I don't know. Uh, AA is asking a random question. Do you, you wear a watch while you're sleeping? No. When I do watch fast, I will, like I did with the Seamaster and the um, Tudor, but uh, I, I don't wear a watch when I sleep. Terry, very proud that I still have the blue Tudor. Well, I might let you down soon. <laughs> Kevin says, Strolls for Life, do they still sell that beer in Michigan? Uh, yeah, I think so. I don't really go beer shopping, though. Uh, Alan says he just got the MM300 blue. Did I try that? No, but my buddy Clayton, who was in the chat, I don't know if he still is, he has it and it's, uh, it looks awesome. I'll try one eventually. Let's see, ball watches rock. I was looking at the ball website today too. Uh, Cali, California Life, how's, uh, Nemo from Long Beach doing? Nemo, yeah, uh, Mimo. I don't know if you're if you're joking because like every time you post up on Instagram, it's like a coffee with his name spelled wrong on it. Everyone gets his name wrong. Thoughts on the Vostok GMT? I don't know. Don't care. Vostoks are cool, but I just I'm they're not for me. When's the next watch fast? Well, I'm kind of doing it right now with the Breitling. Ever since I bought that, I've been wearing it nonstop. So. David, maybe you can get one of those new Speedmasters. Uh, well, I'm not buying one. If you want to buy it, send it in. Slicey Dicey says he wears it because uh, wears a watch while he sleeps because he can't see. Oh man, I gotta. Okay, heck yes for ball watches. Let's see. Jeffrey just ordered the Zellos Black Tip Sand. I think that's the one that Dane ordered too. It looks good. I'm very happy with this carbon one. This one looks very cool. I love the pop of orange on there. And it's surprisingly, it's um, it's a lot nicer than, I don't want to say a lot nicer, I guess. it. I like it. This is what I should say. I like it more now that I have it in hand than I thought I would based on the pictures when I first saw it. So, yeah, it works really good on my wrist. So. so, but this watch is actually, so um, I have actually a small pile of watches going right now. I'm waiting for my founders group to settle in. So at the end of the month, I'll be doing an audit on that, making sure that everybody in the Discord is on founders. And then as soon as that happens, that watch and a pile of watches are actually going to go out on watch tours. So everybody will hopefully be able to get a look at it. Floyd is asking about the Watchdog podcast. Clayton said he's going to record a episode here soon, I think. Monday morning, it sounds like, yeah. He's putting out more content than uh, my buddy Adam from 1010 Talk. He, he does like a video like maybe once a month. <laughs> uh, Slicey Dicey says he's hoping the old Speedmasters get cheaper now that there's a new one but i highly doubt it i kind of doubt it too um, i haven't followed them at all i don't know what they're trending at or what they're doing well i have more boxes to open up should i open more boxes 
And then I could even show you like on the Discord too. If, if uh, people want to look at that. Uh, Clayton says he's boarding too many dogs. Difficult to record. Yeah. I don't know. You could just record though. Uh, Michael's waiting on the Orient Triton. Hopefully he'll have that soon. Open them up. No. Let's see. Bon Bonjour, Bob. What do you think of the Steinhardt brand? I think Steinhardt's a good brand. I don't own any, and I haven't bought any in a long time, but what's in the box? I have a couple of bar big boxes here. I don't think I can open them on camera. I could open them off camera. I don't understand that comment. Something about Kia. $350 for a khaki field mechanical white. Good deal. I don't know what the prices are on those. Sorry. From toppers. Toppers usually doesn't like overcharge or gouge. So I think toppers usually has pretty good prices. Clayton's always posting up stuff from toppers. I got a couple people in some of my chats that always post up uh, the pre-owned stuff from toppers. They always seem like they're pretty good deals. Oh yeah, I forgot about Phobos. There's so many watches out there, guys. I can't even keep up. It's nuts. Steven says 350 for that khaki is a good deal. I would I would trust Steven. I think he pays attention to that stuff pretty good. Oh, plus Craig's saying there's probably some sort of coupon or thing you can click and sign up a email or something for toppers. You get an additional 10% off, maybe. Watch Crazy says, uh, if money was no object, what watch watches would you buy? Um, probably all of them, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> that's that's too much of a softball, I guess. Um, pretty much, I uh, will have spontaneous lust towards watches throughout the day. That if I had endless funds, I would just they would just be showing up. It would be nuts. Uh, it's kind of what's happening now, though. Let's see, just got his phone moves. Hi, Rob. Hey, Ariel. Let's see. Tim Moore, is there a legitimate reason why Tag Heuer has such a negative connotation in the watch landscape? I think there is a legitimate reason why, why people have um, jumped on that train, but I I don't validate it just because... Uh, sometimes you just got to let things go. There's always, there's changeover too in, in these watch companies. People don't realize this or maybe they do. There's constantly a changeover. So just because somebody did something with marketing and did some unsavory things potentially, um, that person usually gets dealt with or doesn't stick around or whatever. And things happen all the time. So um, should you condemn a whole brand because of what maybe a few people or a group did or something? I don't know. I don't really care. I got too many other things to worry about in life than worry about what a watch brand did, you know, decades ago. I don't really care. Let's see. Yeah. Producer Rob. Um, have I ever considered the Hamilton Ventura? Yes, I have. I'm going to talk to Mimo about that. Hopefully get one on the, on the uh, show. Is that a Vario on the left side of the screen? No, I think you're talking about this one. It's actually a Timex. See. Scott is asking, do Tudor Black Bass have AR? No. Tudor, as you, I'm sure, are well aware, is uh, kind of like a uh, company that's related to Rolex. And just like Rolex, they don't do AR coating on their sapphire crystals, right? Um, with the exception of the date magnifier, as far as I know, I think Rolex puts an AR coating on the date magnifier on their watches. So, no, to answer your question, no. I mean, look at the, you don't see any blue hue. It's just full-on refle re, uh, reflection of the light versus, say, a watch with, let's see, Omega does it really good. So, like, when you hit the light with this, like, you don't see the reflection off the crystal. You actually see the light go through the crystal, and you see it reflecting off that ceramic white dial versus, I mean, see the difference? 
I mean, you have to really try to get some of these watches have such good AR coding and like Omega does it, Zen does it, uh, Breitling does it really good where they do such good AR coding. Now the Breitling, you're going to get a hue. I don't really get the blue hue on the Omega, but with the Breitling, you actually get a little bit of the blue hue of the AR coding, but for the most part, it just kind of disappears. Johnny's wearing the um, GSAR. That's pretty cool. Let's see. Chronocray says, my first and last watch of this year, I'm assuming 2020 maybe? Not 2021. Is a rebuy white dial Zen 104. Attempting something I haven't done for the past five years. No new watches for at least the foreseeable future. I will down. Oh, wow. So you're talking this year, 2021, you're going to go down to three and the Zen 104 white dial is one of them. That's awesome. I wish you luck. Don't forget, G-Shocks don't count. Let's see. AR is overrated. Yeah. So, I mean, it kind of is. It's really cool. AR is one of those things, just like we, we get hung up on a lot of different things, right? And we get hung up on certain specs and on certain watches, some of those specs work really good and some of those uh, specs don't work good. So it's not, I don't think you can have like a list of things that you want checked and that applies to all watches. I think all watches can stand alone on their own merit with different specs. Um, yeah, I wish you luck, but, uh, also, um, buy some G-Shocks, man. I'm telling you, they don't count. Let's see. Hamilton Khaki needs AR bad. Mine is a mirror. Yeah, so, like, there are some watches out there that the AR coding actually really needs to be, uh, improved. That they don't have it and they should have it. Uh, Jacob says, I'm in the market for Seamaster Wave and I'm stuck between the black and the white doll. I watched your video on the black versus white and I'm still stuck. Um, yeah, that's one of the watches, man. I some, day, some days I feel like I could have more than one of the Seamasters. It's pretty crazy. So, yeah, Clayton, that was one of the watches I was going to say. The, the Weiss watches, uh, I wish they had much better AR or something, so... Well, I'll tell you one thing. If you're ready to buy a Seamaster, then just go get the black dial or actually the chrome dial. Mix it up. Say you're stuck on the black one or the white one, go get that chrome one with the blued hands. If you can go check one of those out in person, they look stunning. My opinion on smartwatches, um, I don't know about all smartwatches, but I know the Apple Watch is pretty nuts. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, Craig G. The chrome dial one, like legit... If you're a non-watch person, right? So forget about us. We're not talking about us. If you're if you're just like a regular guy that wants a really nice watch, you walk into a, an Omega boutique, you're like, I'm going to get a Seamaster. And you look at the spread of Seamasters and you push all the really expensive ones off to the side because they have like gold everywhere on them and stuff like that. Now you're faced with the black dial, the blue dial, and the chrome dial because the white dial... Nobody has them. They're all sold out. So you're not even looking at that. We're just going to pretend like the white dial is not even there. So you're looking at black, blue, and the chrome. The black, super classic, super clean looking. The blue, for some reason, maybe I'm wrong, but the blue dial in the newer generation one, and if you have one, I'm sorry. It's nothing against you. I think your watch is great. I don't like the blue dial new Seamaster. I just don't like it. The black one looks really good, but you don't say, you're, now this is not us, guys. We're talking about people that aren't into watches like we are, right? So you want a Seamaster, you know that. This is going to be your one and only luxury watch. You're ready to th throw down potentially $5,200. And you see that chrome dial one with the pop of blue everywhere. It is the most interesting looking of that lineup. That's the one you're going to walk out of the store with. I, I dare anybody to try to argue against that. I'm telling you, that gray-blue dial one is the best-looking one to in that lineup. It's the most pop to it. Oh yeah, Tim. So then, if you then if take that same scenario but apply it to the Planet Ocean, 
yeah, that white dial one with the orange, actually, uh, if Dirk is still here, he has one. And I know for a fact, if Bruce goes and buys a Planet Ocean, that's the one he's going to get. Uh, yeah, Stephen, so Stephen says on his Hamilton Khaki Field Auto Titanium Black Dial, no AR is fine. So it, again, not all watches need the same specs. Yeah, just in case the black dial were... I'm just saying, you might actually be able to get a better discount, maybe. I don't know. I don't know how well they sell and everything like that. Yeah, see, Bruce is checking in, too. He would, he would totally go buy that white dial Planet Ocean with the uh, pop of orange on it. It's actually more than a pop of orange. It's a lot of orange. <sighs> Mr. JJ, Rob, what's your thoughts on the full loom dial and sapphire loom to bezel with black loomed hands on indices regarding the Zelos... Diver Frost. The Frost style models from Zelos are just spectacular. If you're a loom junkie, and a lot of us are, um, you, you're not going to do any better than that. That is the best one. You're going to constantly just be uh, caught in the closet, like looking at the loom on your watch, and you know your loved ones are going to be worried about you. Let's see. Trying to read this is a longer comment here. ETA watches are now good buys because the ETA movements have gone up by hundred dollars while the watches are already made have not increased yet. My 2824 ETA is two seconds ahead of my Seiko Pet. Yeah, so ETA um, movements are awesome. I really like those. And I hope, I hope that the Damasco, let me go grab that. Hold on. Now, this one doesn't have the in-house movement, but Damasco made an in-house movement that is similar architecture to the 2824, and actually a lot of the components from the 2824 will actually work on that movement. So I'm hoping that they will market that movement. So I don't know if they're going to mass produce it or if they're just going to keep it for themselves or what, but I would love to see that movement make its way into other brands. Clayton's lusting after it too. Now there's no deals on them or discounts on them. So you're going to pay a premium. I don't remember what the premium is. It's maybe like $500 uh, premium over the 2824. So it's hard to justify it, but Bruce Williams with the super chat, $5 hairs. That's awesome. Thanks, man. I think you, you're supposed to move that decimal over a couple spots though. You kind of messed up there, buddy. Let's see. Yeah. Nafari and the Damasco in-house is fantastic. It's actually kind of like uh, slightly modified. Oh, five cent. No, the other way. You got to boom, boom to the right. Uh, let's see. Watch crazy. Do I own bronze watches? If so, how was that? I did own bronze. Bronze was never my thing. So I kind of gave them up. Is the white Breitling Super Ocean widely available? Can you get a discount? Uh, good question, David. I think no. So I did talk to Richard at Saltzman's. He's a sales manager and they're an uh, authorized dealer for Breitling. That's my preferred authorized dealer. That's where I actually bought that one from. Here's the deal. Oh, Bruce, by the way, good luck buying a watch off from Dirk. He does not sell watches. <laughs> so um, the white dialed, Super Ocean, definitely in the 42, but I think maybe even across the whole Super Ocean lineup, Richard told me is the top seller. So it kind of falls under the same scenario that we're having with the White Seamaster. Um, they're just hot right now. And I, will that stick around? I don't know. Um, it might, it might uh, change up. We'll see. William's looking for stealth wealth, I guess, here. This isn't all my watches. I put out these watches because people were chiming in what they were wearing, and I was trying to kind of half match it. Uh, let's see. Where are we at here? Oh, we were talking about the white Super Ocean. Yeah, so I had to wait for that. And then, so I don't know if production is a little bit better with the Breitling, but we'll see. Uh, let's see. 
Monaro man is checking in from Sydney, Australia. 2021 for the white dial. So, and I don't know if that's, you know, because of people viewing content. You know, there was actually some really good videos, uh, quite a few of them of the white Seamaster. And then the next thing you know, boom, they sell out everywhere and there's no more discounts and they can't even get the darn thing. So. Scott is wearing the Tudor Black Bay Blue 41 ETA. I'm assuming you mean the diver, because that's a long description. So the smile dial, they call it. Any word on the next titanium square? William, no, I have not heard anything, but I kind of don't really have any inside. I can hit up, um, there's a couple of people I can hit up and ask them about. Um, I'll check. Yeah, I'm not 100%. Yeah, Scott. So that's cool. I really like that smile dial diver. Um, that's one of my favorites, actually. So, B Dev says, Rob, Super Ocean or Black Bay 41 with bezel? Which one do you prefer? I'm considering the Black Bay 41 versus the Super Ocean. Um, well, I've owned both now because I did have the red bezel Black Bay 41 smile dial. I don't care for the new in-house movement one for multiple reasons. One, it's thick. <laughs> Dirk's jumping in with the fourteen ninety nine super chat. That's awesome. Uh, Craig says the red metal square is coming soon. That's pretty cool. So back to the comparison between the Super Ocean and the uh, Black Bay forty one Diver. <sighs> well, I think you're gonna get. I think the Breitling's, on on paper, the Breitling's better. On wrist, I feel like the Breitling's better. It wears better. I only say that because the Tudor ends up having the slab side. In, on the Diver, it's actually even taller than this. And this already looks pretty tall on this one. This is actually a thin watch. But when you have a slab side watch, it actually presents and looks larger, like a larger watch on wrist, even though it's not. And when you have the Breitling, it's a, it's it still has a similar you know style. It's kind of flat-ish, and it's full polished, but it has the turned down lugs. Um, it's just going to present, feel, and wear much smaller on wrist than the Black Bay Forty One Diver will. And the Smile Dial Tudor Black Bays are getting kind of hard to. Not hard to buy. You can find them and you can buy them, but you're going to pay a premium. They're basically trend, as far as I can tell, they're basically trending at what they were retail new when they came out, which has been years. How heavy does the tuna feel? Well, on bracelet, it's it's got some weight to it. It's, um, I, I don't know the actual weight, but especially for a quartz watch, I mean, it's, it's got to be as heavy, if not maybe a touch heavier than my Seamaster, and that's pretty heavy too. So it's a it's a beast of a watch, but it wears really good. I have the new tuna on the way too. This tuna I'm actually giving away, by the way. That's going to my founders group once we hit 100. Let's see. Any, let's see. Joe says, any good AD to pick up the Seiko SPB-143 in the States? Um, I don't, is that even, I don't know if anybody even has that. Mark says, hey Rob, bought the SWC Bunker because of you. One of the nicest watches I've ever owned. Also just bought the Squale Sub-39. I still want to check out that Squale Sub-39. That looks like a go cool watch too. Tim is asking if I'm into Rolex watches. Yeah, I've owned one Rolex. It was the Oyster Perpetual 39 white dial. And um, I'm always tempted by Rolex. I, I know I'll end up owning another one in the future. So Jorge's checking in. I haven't talked to you in a little while. Happy New Year, Jorge. Let's see. Zin U1 or Marine Master Emperor Tuna. Um... I kind of draw my lines with some of the uh, Seikos. I don't know that I would go Mar Marine Master Emperor Tuna, maybe, I guess. Um, but the Zin U1 is really cool. I have never checked out the Zin U1 in hand, though. 
Anthony says, a white Seamaster or a great watch? Question mark. Yes. Um, tired of waiting for an OP41 and that white C seems like a good watch to scratch. The problem, Anthony, is you can't get these either. I don't know that any ADs have these. You can call around. You might be able to find one. Um, but it might be a race to the finish line uh, by the time you get one of those or an Oyster Perpetual 41. Scott, favorite travel watch case? I haven't done a ton of traveling, but I, I think I lean towards the watch roll. Somebody gave me one, and uh, I used it on my trip to Florida, and it worked out pretty good. Uh, let's see, Philip. Hey, Rob, would you recommend the SKX-013 or the Kamasa? Um, I, don't, I don't know. Those are two watches that I'm not really drawn to. The SKX-013 is too small for me. And the Kamasu is, uh, I don't like the size of the crown on that. Uh, Nathan, what do I think about Islander watches? I think Mark's filling a huge void in the market and doing it better than um, a lot of other people. So, let's see, what is your draw? What is my draw to Rolex? Um, amazing watches, excellent brand, heritage, and uh, I don't know, it's a Rolex. That goes back to their marketing, I guess. David Williams with the $2 Super Chat. Awesome, thank you. Says, thanks for all you do for the community. David, that means a lot, man. I appreciate it. Mark, Bruce, nobody needs a Rolex. Um, True, Mark, I guess. But for someone like me that's fully immersed in the hobby and a constant content creator, and I have all these other watches... I mean, a Rolex kind of makes sense. Uh, Rob with a $2 super chat? That's not me. It's a different Rob. So, uh, cold in Michigan, question mark, 75 in Southern California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But is there an earthquake or a landslide or a fire? Yeah. I don't know. SoCal is awesome because the temps are like 75 and sunny every day showing off but um yeah it's cold here it's like 15 degrees out right now it kind of sucks uh, let's see islander look good and good price yeah terry says i need a rolex oh no terry's looking at rolexes now Joseph's picking up an Arnie, Seiko Arnie right now. That's awesome. Uh, Philip Damasco or the 556? Um, I'm kind of digging the DS30 over the uh, 556. I think, I think more often than not, you're going to see uh, people kind of just... I, I think there's more Zen 556 on wrist than there are Damasco DS30s. For that reason alone, almost, I can justify going with the Damasco over it. Dirk, I think everyone needs to experience a Rolex. I think to a certain extent, yeah, I don't know that you actually need to own it or buy it or something like that. But if you're in the watch hobby, yeah, walk into an AD or go to a watch meet or, you know, meet up with somebody or something like that. You need to actually check one out and put it on your wrist at the bare minimum. Hey, Chris is here. Man, this Timex is like, it's really cool looking. I mean, it's still a Timex. It's, you know, a cheap watch, but... For a cheap watch, this thing is like, it's the cool factors like off the charts with it. Craig G. Too bad you can't get the Damasco with Arabic numerals. No, but does the 556 have that? I can't remember. <laughs> Monaro Man says, Rolex overrated, overpriced. Um, Yeah, to a certain extent, but... They are cool, and people buy them, and then they sell for more than what they bought them for. So I don't know. How, I don't know. I don't think you can say overpriced. That's that's a. I think I could argue against that. Let's see. Matthew Barton with two. Is that pounds? Two pounds. Can that band be changed out on the Timex? Yeah, it's just a bun strap. I. Um, oh, oh, wow, it's actually, I can't wait to do the video on this. 
it's actually true wire lugs. That is sick. Yeah, it's a bun strap. So, I mean, you can take that part off. You can wear it on a regular strap. It's going to be a pass-through, though. And that's, I believe that's 20 millimeter. Eh, like 19 millimeter. You might be able to stuff a 20 in there, but uh, I can't imagine wearing it on anything other than this. And really, the straps that Timex put out are actually really nice. It's the Red Wing leather strap. So, that watch kind of lends itself to be uh, pretty good on that strap. What? You hear May 31st will be the last day you can buy watches. Well, that's my birthday, so I'll buy one. Bruce, I purchased a brand new 1980 GMT Master, paid $550 while stationed in Sicily. Sold it a while back. Guess I should have kept it. Oh, man. I've heard so many stories like that. They were like kind of... that, But... In 1980, 550 bucks was probably a lot of money for you. Did you get your initial DG shock yet? Uh, no. Uh, so Adam from 1010 Talk actually bought that watch. I gave him money for it and he bought it. So he's going to get it and that'll probably be his video that he posts once a month. Um, and then he'll send it to me. So no hurry. It'll arrive eventually. All right, there's a lot of chats flowing through here. I'm trying to keep up, guys. I was encouraging anyone who liked the Vario to check out the Timex Midget. Yeah, this is really cool. I'm digging that. I'm excited to do the video on them. It's awesome that Chris sent that over. Uh, Shane's asking, how's the ProTrack? I still have it. I haven't really worn it. It's right here. I'm going to keep it because this is a rebuy and I don't like to do rebuys, but if I'm going to have a ProTrack, this is the one I wanted. So I picked that back up, but yeah, awesome watch. Any favorite Seiko 5s? No. I don't even really have, I'm not really into Seiko right now, guys. I mean, that's kind of messed up to say, though, I guess. I did buy that tuna, and I actually bought the new tuna, and I still love my Monster. It's just, none of these newer Seikos are really doing anything for me. Uh, Char says he likes the diversity of my collection. Well, these aren't all mine. Um, I mean, they're mostly mine, but, like, the Timex isn't mine, the Damasco's not mine, the Zin's not mine. Mm, and the Squally's not mine. But maybe I should just pay for that. Anthony with a big $20 super chat. That's awesome. Thank you very much, Anthony. You pick my next watch. Current collection. Oh, man, you're going to throw... This is... Hold on a second. Pick my watch. Current collection is AP Royal Oak. AP White Dial Diver. Explorer 2 White Dial 5-digit. All Green Submariner. Black Ceramic Daytona. Black Bay 58 Blue. Where do I go not Next. PM, what is PM? Is that, um, I don't know what PM is. Or two-tone, maybe. Man, you got, you, so you're playing with watches that I really don't know a ton about. These are some pretty awesome watches. Um, I, will, I was actually looking at, do you like Panerai? Is that what the PM is? I don't know. I mean, a two-tone, we'll have to talk a little bit more, though. Matthew with the one-pound uh, uh, super chat, appreciate that. But let's go back to Anthony here, because I do want to say something. I was talking to Bruce earlier today, and we were both looking at Panerai. And uh, one of my founders had posted up a picture in the wrist. Oh, precious metal. Thank you, Craig. I don't know. I'm a little slow tonight, or all the time. I'm a window licker, right? So, and if, listen, I'm not going to go down the, I'm not going to go down the Panerai chat if you're like anti-Panerai, but the, I think it was Ralph posted up, he's one of my founders, he posted up a picture, he's got, I don't even know what, I don't know the numbers of him, right? But he has one that's the titanium case, I know it's not precious metal, but I'm a titanium fanboy, and I like the whole story behind Panerai, um, how they came up and everything. They take a hit and everything like that. 
I get it. So I don't know how you buy them. I don't know a ton about like buying them because I know everyone says you if you buy a Panerai at retail, basically you're screwed. But it sounds like you kind of keep your watches anyway. But a titanium, and I would go with a base. I wouldn't go with a crazy expensive one. Um, maybe the eight-day is plenty, but I would actually probably go with a three-day hand-wound. I don't know. Um, again, like I said, I don't know the numbers, but I think you can get the Panerai three day in titanium when i was looking on their website that one actually looked really cool to me because it's very simple it has the larger it's more original to the to the um when they first were out so uh oh bruce <laughs> dirk might sell his planet ocean to go get a panerai yeah, they have quite the catalog, and they have some really hidden gems in there. And I think most of the gems for Panerai are on the base ones, the the more, quote, affordable ones. Yeah, Anthony, well, let's check it out. You know, let's look into that. Let's look at the, uh, it's in-house too, right? The eight-day is for sure. I think they're three-day is. I can't remember. I don't know what else would be at your level. I really don't play at that level. <laughs> Nathan says the PM is a pearl master. No, you could go precious metals, but I think with your collection, you have mostly sport kind of watches. So I think I would go two-tone before I'd go full precious metal. I don't know. I mean, you could go with a bluesy. You might be able to pick one of those up. That would be pretty dope. Uh, Nefarian says Moser. Again, I haven't researched Moser a ton, but the few that I've actually looked at, I kind of was like, meh, it doesn't really do anything for me. I like more of a really more rugged, sporty type watch. CFC, the two-tone GMT root beer is pretty cool. Um, I actually know somebody that might be selling a two-tone GMT root beer. Maybe. Uh, Tim, is it safe in the U.S. to wear an expensive watch? Question mark. For example, here in Paris, it's more and more common to read news about street robberies. Um, I mean, there's so Tim, there's areas in the United States that obviously I don't know how to say this. If you're if you're worried about someone swiping your watch, you probably should be worried about many things, and you probably shouldn't even be in that space. That's kind of more of the attitude. You don't want to become a victim anywhere you go, right? So, um, you know, there's measures you can take to protect yourself. Um, but ideally, the best protection is just don't be in those situations. You know, I, I, can, I can walk around with all these watches and, and not worry where I am. So, don't go to Fresno, California. See, like Dustin, you know... Um, yeah, there's areas where you don't want to go. It's a lot of big cities and stuff like that. But I've I've been to Chicago, and that's pretty crazy. But I stay on Michigan Ave, and I stay in my little bubble. I don't go outside of that, and you don't go wandering around at night and everything like that. You just, you just don't be a victim. But again, like, you know, some people are saying about concealed carry or something. I don't want to get into that topic, but um, you don't want to ever even be in the situation so, I think it's all about situational awareness and don't don't let yourself be a victim. <laughs> Christian uh, pairs his EDC up. I can't find a watch to match my... Um, Dessert warrior, though. <laughs> what am I drinking? Water. I was drinking a yangling, but it's empty. Uh, WTF is that? Let's see. Walter with a Rolex or Omega. Yeah, how appropriate, right? James Bondish. That'd be kind of cool. 
How's the golden pilsner? Pretty good. Yingling. This, this one's uh, empty. It's, uh, it's all gone. It was pretty good. That was uh, some stuff I picked up in Florida because I had never seen it up here in Michigan. So, Anyone have interest in the PAM 968 Bronzo? David, are you looking to sell? Maybe, huh? Anthony, maybe Bruce will... Oh, yeah. I mean, so you could get the uh, Vacheron Overseas. If you could pick up one of those, man, all the pictures and video I've seen of that watch, that's actually really cool. May have to do a fashion watch with my Dessert Warrior. Um, I might be able to find a G-Shock to kind of match it. That'd be my only, my only hope, I think. Yeah, the VC Overseas is is a spectacular watch. Jorge says he's boring. He sticks with Corona or the Sol. Um, God, what? I forget which one I was drinking for a little while there. Have you tried a black and tan? Uh, yeah, but in a different brand. I don't remember what it was. Uh, let's see. Go swatch. Yeah, swatch would work. Oh, David, that's right. David has a friend that works at the uh, authorized dealer for Panerai, the boutique in Las Vegas. So, um, I don't know. Maybe I should fly out to Vegas and check that out. Turquoise Doxas 300T paired with your sprinkles knife. That would match that blue really good. I'm not buying a Doxa, though. Anthony, you are from Michigan. Yes, I am born and raised and still living in Michigan for now. And I don't know. Even as when I retire, I might as well, but we'll see. J-Rod, any dogs? If so, do they scratch your watches? I have no pets. Pets destroy homes, and I like my house to be a little bit nicer. I don't want it to be destroyed. I'm already hard enough on it. I can see you with a Panerai submersible into the heftier watches these days. Yeah, but then I would get the titanium case. Oh, since, not shove. Yeah, I gotcha. Casino bought all my watches. Oh, Rob, it's a baller watch. Uh, so I could ball out, right? Joseph says firearms are the most expensive hobby. Yeah, they were. I was into that for a little while. That's pretty expensive. But I have to say, because I still, even uh, even that hobby, like all my hobbies, I approach them with the, I try to go for the best value in every category. CFC says, hey, Rob, what happened with the North flag? Why did you sell it so quickly? Just, I don't know. I think I, I originally, I kind of blamed it on having too many kind of expensive watches, but I'm right back into that category again. So I'm now leaning towards, I guess I just didn't connect with it like I hoped. I really like the white dial watches. So, oh, Anthony, you're Battle Creek. Yeah, that's just south of me. That's not too far. Like a two and a half, three hour drive. Probably about a three hour drive. Not too bad. I've been down there a couple times. Jorge says, says Rainbow Daytona would match that knife. Uh, no, this is too pastel -y, don't you think? I would need uh, more bold colors on it. These are soft colors. Uh, David says, did I ever put the Black Bay 41 on a rubber crafter blue or maybe a Vanguard? No, I, I did wear it on the, um, I don't know if I still have the strap here, but I did wear it on, the heck was it? Um, what's the Canadian one? I've, I've drawn a blank. The, the the Canadian wa or strap company, right? Is that what it's called? Watch Strap Canada? I can't remember what it's called. Uh, they had a vulcanized rubber one. I wore it on that. Mark said he grew up in Midland, lived in TC and Harbor Springs. So I'm not too far from Traverse City, and I actually spent some time in Midland, hung out. You know, I 
you know, walked across the Tridge, rode my bike all over, all that stuff. So I know that area a little bit. Haven't really played around up in Har Harbor Springs at all, but. Cole's checking in from South Africa. Pink, yes. The Unforgiven. The pink OP36. That would work. You're right. The pink OP36 would work. Uh, German's Lifestyle. I love your watch collection. I'm struggling to either buy the Hamilton Pilot, the Murph, or the Hamilton Khaki Automatic. The Murph is kind of a big watch, so depending on your wrist size, the Murph might let you down. I'd be careful with that one. The Hamilton Pilot um, wears better, but looks really big because of the dial size. And then any of the Hamilton khakis, regardless of your wrist size, I think you're going to be, that's going to probably be your sweet spot. I would figure out your wrist size and a khaki to correspond with that. I think you're going to be happier choosing the khakis. Uh, Kevin, I did wear it on a Chevron strap too, but um, I had it on the vulcanized rubber, if that's what you're talking about. G-Shock Rainbow Toad Frogman will go with that knife perfectly. It would. Yes, Craig, thank you. I don't know why I, was, I couldn't remember. Strap Mill Canada. Yes, Strap Mill Canada. I like their vulcanized rubber. I might actually go place another order with them. They update their website and they always add products, but they don't really tell me, so I have to go look. I don't remember what all they carry. Chris is asking, how do I like this uh, Swiss watch company bunker? I like that watch. I'm happy with it. I haven't really worn it too much, but I like it. Trying to read the comments, guys, here. Anthony, out in Arizona now. You're smart. It's warmer. I'm sick of the cold. Strap. Oh, yeah. I saw a Rolex on Instagram with a special paint job like the Desert Warrior. Not sure about how much more. Okay. Someone uh, customized the Rolex to look like a donut. Love that candy pink. Hey, what's your thoughts on the marathon watches, especially the divers? Well-built, excellent watches, um, decent price points as well. Um, I just, I don't usually connect with them. Rob says, Midland, the big water tower. I don't remember the big water tower for some reason. I don't know why. I remember the Tridge and the downtown area. And then where I actually was visiting was actually closer to the highway. So... Uh, there was like a huge tennis court over there somewhere. We'd go uh, pick up tennis balls and stuff. Steven says he's out of here. He's out of Michigan in a year or sooner. Been here a whole life. Where are you going, Steven? I'm guessing somewhere a little bit warmer. Us Michiganders, I tell you, we, we all, I think not all, but like a lot of us, we get sick of the cold, right? And then we'll take off and we'll get our... <sighs> we'll get all the warmth we need and everything like that. And then it seems like a lot of us come back. Uh, David is asking, have you decided to stay away from Rolex? I remember you used to have one, but don't know if you sold it. Yeah, I used to have the OP39 white dial. I did sell it. No regrets buying it. No regrets selling it. Although if I would have waited just a little bit longer, I probably could have made a little extra money on it. Um, as it was, I lost a little bit. But I'm assuming the new owner is very happy with it. No, I'm not avoiding Rolex at all. I'll probably own another one at some point. Mark is in Colorado now, way better skiing. Uh, the skiing in Colorado is probably too good. Steven BGJMA is in Warren, Michigan, down there in the dirty southeast Michigan, tearing it up. Uh, let's see. So where did the G-Shock figures come from? I want one. <laughs> You can pick them up on eBay. Just type in uh, G-Shock G-Man or you can do G-Shock G-Set because like this guy, I don't know about that one, but this one originally came in a set. So it came with two anniversary edition, like the, the package. I'm, I'm mimicking the packaging here. There was two G-Shock squares and then they had the G-Man and it came in this little box set. They're kind of expensive now, but they're dirty Southies. Well, the company I work for is based out of Southeast, so I'm not too mad about it. Steven's down in Lansing. Yeah, my uh, my neighbor where I live now was actually a um, homicide, chief homicide detective in downtown Lansing 
uh, when he retired many, many years ago. He said he was telling me stories about walking the beat in downtown Lansing. So I see your collection doesn't contain many vintage pieces. Are you very selective with buying vintage? So Cole, um, I'm, I'm so selective with buying vintage pieces that I basically don't even look at vintage watches. They scare me. I like new shiny things and that's where I stay. That's my happy place. Mr. JJ checking in from Yokohama, Japan. Weather is nice today. Yeah, I know uh, the weather can get pretty funky in Japan there for sure. <laughs> yeah, boats are very expensive. It's just one hole in the water to throw money at. Kind of like Jeeps and everything else. 300 bucks for the G-Man. Yeah, I think, honestly, I, I know I didn't pay 300 for those. But I did pay, I bet you I paid a hundred and a half. I think I paid a hundred and a half for that, maybe. Something like that, 130. I can't remember, it's been so long. Yeah, they don't give them away, they're hard to get. Uh, Mark, we could probably start an all Michigan live. No, but you know what I might do? As soon as we can get things sorted out here and we can, uh, you know, meet up or something like that, I would like to do a meet up in Michigan. We could probably arrange that, don't you think? Uh, Ariel says, what microbrand watch uses best movements? Well, Swiss watch right here is considered the microbrand, and they're using uh, a nice Swiss movement in this. I believe it's the Salita SW200, I think. I can't remember. Terry says, retire in Florida, buy a boat, open a bait shop. Um, retire in Florida, maybe. Buy a boat, no. Um, so me and boats don't get along. I've literally sunk three boats all the way down. Open a bait shop? No, uh, that's not going to happen. I'll tell you what I will do, Terry, though. I will, at least, at the bare minimum, I will be a snowbird. Even if I stay living in Michigan, I will get out of here in the winter. But ideally, my plan is to RV. So I'll probably do a truck and trailer or something like that. And then I'll probably uh, live in the RV for at least two or three months in the winter, if not maybe even more depending if I really connect with it I might actually go full time but that'll be in retirement and I will definitely make my rounds down to Florida Shane says say yay yeah to the UPA uh, my son actually just went back up to school today he left this morning I actually need to check in with him after the live stream he's up there all the way up in Houghton going to Michigan Tech University studying to become an electrical engineer Greetings, Rob. What do you think of the Doxus Sea Rambler 300T? Thinking about pulling the trigger, Jason, Toronto, Canada. I I think the Doxa 300T is the best lineup in their lineup. For me personally, that's the one I like. The Sea Rambler, I believe that's the silver dial one, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and, but that has a nice pop of orange on it too. I think it has an orange Minahan. I like that one. That's a good looking watch. I personally would go towards the Caribbean. I like the blue dial with the orange hand. But... I think that's a really good watch. I think you'd be happy with it. Oh, man. I'm trying to scroll through these comments, guys. I can't keep up. Joseph says he wants a Manta. They're killing it lately. Check out the Manta Diver. What is that one called? The Ocean King? Man, I like that one. I had that one with the metal bezel. I sold it to, I think he's one in one of my uh, in my founders group, but that was a really good one. Zelos also, I'm not sure what Harold's talking about there, but he does use some good movements as well. Mark says, can you get us all on Crystal Downs? So Crystal Downs is open one day a year to the public, but it might be, I think, just residents of that county. I'm not 100% sure, but um, you could probably get in there right now because Crystal Downs is pretty much empty right now. There's nobody there. So, and there's a little bit of snow, but if you use a colored ball, you could probably go run, play that course real quick. At least get a couple holes in before you get kicked off. Uh, let's see. Time flies. He says, I have two Montas. Do it, you won't regret it. Yeah, Manta is very, very good. Detroit Spartan says, Random Rob. Yeah, that's me. Apparently living in the RV. Maybe. Maybe. 
my, if you looked at my YouTube channels that I subscribe to, I actually subscribe to quite a few full-time RVers. So it is definitely a little dream I have. Uh, J-Rod, snowflake hand with snowflake dial, yay or nay? Hmm, interesting. I like the way you think, because I like snowflake hands and I like white dials. Actually, I really wish Tudor would make a white dial watch. I think that would be cool. Nefarian says he's heading southwest. I'm done with the cold as soon as possible, yeah. Detroit Spartan, Houghton Hancock, yep. Up there at FU, Finland University. No, it's not. He goes, he's on the Houghton side. He's at Michigan Tech. Philip, if you could only have one watch under $500, what would it be? I would keep my Orange Monster. I don't know if you can buy one of these for $500 now, but I got this one for like $175, something like that. Yeah, Detroit Spartan says that is a great school. Michigan Tech University is an awesome school. It's an awesome school to take all of my son's dad's money as well. Uh, Steven says his sis is carefree Arizona or Florida. Oh, you're going to go Arizona or Florida. Both. Do both. So you can get a little bit of the dry heat, a little bit of the tropical weather. Jorge says he's going to retire to Southern Cal or South Bend. What? How are you going to pick Southern California or South Bend, Indiana? That doesn't even make any sense. I don't know, man. They were putting something in the water in Chicago. They got you all messed up. I will say this. When I did just drive through Indiana, no lie. So that was, what, 1,200 miles there, 1,200 miles back? So... And all that driving, the absolute best drivers I ran into along that trip, all of them were in Indiana. If I, some, maybe somebody in, that lives in Indiana will dispute this, but my experience driving through Indiana with the drivers, top-notch drivers in Indiana. Anthony, oh man, we got to hear this story. Anthony says, I almost went to jail in Gladwin County one time in Michigan. Bad night all the way around. Why are you causing trouble in Gladwin? I, Gladwin's usually pretty low-key. There's no problems there. Detroit Spartan says, Mark, I can get you on Crystal Downs, no problem. Detroit Spartan, you need to send me an email because I would like to talk to you about that. I go up into that Crystal Downs area every day. Every day I'm up in there. Uh, let's see. Fringe Friends, what's best? SKX Alternative. Hmm, probably an Islander. An Islander watch, I guess, because it's basically an SKX. And the Kingsley Club. I have not been to the Kingsley Club. I, I know uh, some friends that have been over there. They like that. Uh, Rob says, good night. Oh, family time. Happy New Year. Thanks for stopping in, Rob. Uh, Scooter Boy says, you should get on Archery Luxuries Live. I was on his live once. It's hard to get a word in edgewise with him. I prefer just running my own channel. Ryan, can you do a side-by-side -side with the SKX on the Super Ocean one? Absolutely, I can do that. I need to do the video on the Super Ocean, too. I'm way behind on videos, but I'm going to kind of take it easy. They kind of present very similar, and I think it's partly because of the dial size. The dial size is actually very close to the same be kind of cool to have a white. Actually, you can go over to uh, Mark at Long Island Watch over at the Islander. I think he has a white dialed SKX. That would be pretty cool. That would wear really good. I'm really loving the Super Ocean guys. David, thanks for stopping in. I really appreciate it, man. My wrist check today. Seiko Light Blue SPB 179. That's from Mr. JJ. What's on this? What's the strap on the Damasco? That um, I think it's the factory leather that it came on. My buddy sent this over, so I think it's it's got the factory hardware and everything. It's just a a nice, rich, dark brown leather strap. Joseph says the uh, Mako USA two with the sapphire in white is amazing. The crown is poor, as you stated. Yeah. I wish they would redesign the Mako 
in the uh, ray and everything like that and go with a little bit bigger crown. I know that's going to be a total different design. That's You can't just throw a larger crown on it because of the crown guards and everything like that. But that watch, I think, would be a home run. Would be. Terry, did I just get an open invite to stay at your house? Ah, do you have room for an Airstream? Can I mooch dock? That's called mooch docking, where you take your RV. See, I know all these terms, right? You take your RV and you park it at somebody's property and you plug into their electric and it's called mooch docking. And I promise I won't, well, I could maybe use your water, but I won't dump my, dump my uh, gray or uh, black water tanks. Just got, let's see, Scott says, just got an Italian rubber strap and the vanilla smell is so strong I'm in the process of trying to remove it. Yeah, sometimes they're a little bit much. I have noticed that on a couple of them. And it takes a while for them to soft. Um, Scott says, no, boondocking is when you have zero hookups and you're actually off on, um, like, pub, more of like a public land or a reserve or something like that. When you go into somebody else's property, like a buddy or friend or family, and then you kind of soft hook up, it'd be light hookups, like just the, you know, electric, maybe water, that's called mooch docking. So boondocking is like full off grid. Um, let's see, any chance you could get an Oak and Oscar in for review? I have, if you have already, uh, I, no, I haven't. I can reach out to those guys and see if they can send me one, but I'm not sure if they, uh, if they mess around. Mr. JJ says, wow, Airstream, very nice. Th listen, that's just a pipe dream. I don't know. And even if I did, I'd have to get, um, I'd have to probably, get, you know, get a used one because they're kind of expensive. Joseph, have I looked up fairer watches? Yeah, I've had, a I've had those on the show before. Christian, rocking the Luminox 3603 Orange because I saw a review on it. Yeah. Um, was that the one I did the repair on? There's some really cool Lum Some of the newer Luminox are actually, like, pretty banging. They're pretty good. Uh, Detroit Spartan, again, any thoughts on the Omega Speedmaster Ultraman? I have the Speedy Tuesday one uh, thinking about buying the... I really don't know a ton about the Omega Speedmasters, to be honest with you, Mr. Spartan. It's the best version of the original Luminox design. I kind of agree with you on that. That's kind of the quintessential Luminox. Terry, thanks for chiming in. I appreciate it. We will talk soon. I'll probably send you a message. Uh, Detroit says he has the Fairer Chrono. Pretty nice. That is nice. I like that. Let's see. Angel says, hi, Rob. Thank you for introducing me to Borealis. They have pretty nice options. I agree. And they're constantly coming out with new ones. Actually, Carlos, um, the owner of Borealis, just sent me a FedEx package. I should have it probably Monday or Tuesday. I'll try to do the unboxing. It's a new release from Borealis. So I'll have that one on the show real soon as well. Uh, Joseph says, are isoframes worth it? Um, I actually have one around here somewhere. I, I'm not, I don't really care for them. I think they're too thick. Uh, I know a lot of people swear by them. I just, I don't really care for the isoframes. I would rather go with a uh, Strap Mill Canada vulcanized rubber. I like the vulcanized rubber or the FKM rubber. Um, those seem to work way better in my opinion. Does that Zen have a blue or black dial? It's a black dial so it's the but it has the matte finish i did a video on this i just posted it it's the black dial the eye so it has like the just the regular eye markers with the syringe hands instead of arabics um and but this one has the matte case on it which um are kind of a limited production they didn't say how many but they're not making a ton of these because of the bead blasting finish they did on it it was pretty time consuming from what i understand anthony says i want to tell you I want you to tell me a little more about the North Flag. Never held one, but almost ordered one on many occasions. Did you have the bracelet? Why no love? I love, I actually do love the North Flag. Um, but I don't regret selling it. I don't miss it at all. And I did get, I bought it used and the, the seller had the bracelet and the strap. So I had the leather strap and the bracelet. Right? Leather strap. Yeah, it was a leather strap. So I had full, full kit plus extras, right? 
Um, it's so unique. It is. There's so many firsts with that watch too from Tudor. That is such a really good watch. I don't know. There's something missing though. I don't know. I I think maybe it's this. So with certain brands, and I want to do a video on this soon. So when I when you think Tudor, you think Snowflake Hands. I do anyway. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. But so if I'm going to own a Tudor, I want the Snowflake Hands. If I'm going to own a Rolex, I want the Mercedes Hands, right? Certain watches have that special handset that is really tied to the brand. When you think of Seiko, at least for me, I either think of the Monster Hands or the SKX Hands. Those are iconic to those watches. And that's what I like about them. I like that handset. I wouldn't change it. When I think, I'm trying to, I don't know. Some brands have that and some don't. The Omega Seamaster, you kind of want the skeletonized hands, right? They had some with the sword hands, and those are really good looking. But if I'm going to own a Seamaster, I want the skeletonized hands. I, th I think it's just, I think maybe that's part of the reason. I don't know. Trying to read some of the comments here. I'm gonna probably sign off in a little bit, but hey Jorge, go enjoy family night, game night. From where did you purchase those Seiko badges? What Seiko badges? Do I have a Seiko badge? Favorite seconds hand balance. Favorite seconds hand balance. Um I don't know. I'm usually good with just like a lollipop. I really don't focus on the seconds hand too much. Stova or Laco? Stova all day. Stova. Uh, modern big triangle Seamaster would be nice. That, man, there's a lot there still to be done. Swami Ralph with a $9.99 mark, mark down from $10. $9.99. Well played, sir. I like that super chat. Zenith is really cool. Trident balance on the C6. Oh, yeah, Craig. That is really cool. I don't have one here now. I don't. Th that's kind of like a cool balance on a second hand, and I don't have that. I'm trying to think what's... I don't really have any really cool, fun balances. A lot of them are just, you know, just regular kind of sticking out. I do like lollipops, like a lot of the Seikos where the lollipops out there and it's loomed. That's kind of fun, too. Philip says he's thinking about selling his uh, C60. Yeah, sell it. Mooch docking. Yeah, there's a bunch of RV terms. Do I have any favorite sports teams? I would say no. I pretty much don't watch any sports. I, I guess I just, I try occasionally, but I just, I don't really care. Detroit Spartan, good question. Thoughts on Shinola? I know they're hated in, in this world, but... I have a bunch of collector's pieces uh, because they're local. I've owned, I think, three Shinola watches, and I, w I do want to try. I would consider buying a new Runwell automatic because I like the wire lugs, right? I absolutely love that. That's like my favorite thing about Shinola. When you think Shinola, in my opinion, I think the Runwell 41, I think it is, with the wire lugs. So I, if I did that watch in the automatic, I'd be super happy. I think that'd be a fun watch. And then I know like my buddy Clayton, the Watchdog Podcast, he has the diver watch in the automatic. That's a really cool watch too. I don't have a problem with Shinola. Not at all. Um, all right, I think I'm going to sign off, guys. I'm like over 90 minutes long. I didn't open the other boxes, but that's fine because I'll do unboxing videos on those. I just wanted to do live and give you guys a little hangout. We opened one watch. We opened up the Timex. So if you guys have any last minute questions, let me know right now before I go. Let me know. You got any questions? Pat says a coworker has the Shinola Lake Huron Monster. It's basically a homage to your Seiko Monster. <laughs> Their dive watches look pretty well built. Good night. Appreciate what you do. Thanks, bro. 
Well, have a great week, everyone. Oh, wait, weekend. Oh, um, I will be going. I'll be going live with Bruce on Bruce's channel, Bruce William, on Sunday. And then, of course, I'll do my Monday live as well. Kyle's asking Black Bay 36 or Brightling Colt 41. Uh, those can kind of coexist. The, so here's the thing with the Colt 41. It, like all the Breitlings, they wear small. So depending on your wrist size, which I'm assuming is a little bit smaller, otherwise you wouldn't be looking at the, the uh, Black Bay 36. The Black Bay 36, the snowflake hands to indice balance is really good. That's probably one of the best balanced dials from Tudor. And then the Breitling Colt 41 also is going to wear really good. So if you like a diver style watch with a metal bezel, the Colt 41 is 100% going to be your pick. However, I think you might be happier with the Black Bay 36. I think long term, that watch is actually probably going to serve you better. Yeah, this is going to be a long one too to watch back like for later if somebody wants to watch it. Oh, Detroit Spartan has the first automatic monster they made, which is only limited to 500 pieces. That one's probably worth some bank. A lot of people don't know this. Even some of the earlier um, Shinola quartz watches are actually worth, like, a lot of money. Advice on magnetism. Is this a big an issue, as some say? Well, I've handled a lot of watches. I mean, like, a lot of watches, right? And coming through here, magnetized... I've only seen probably maybe six that were actually really magnetized, six or seven. By the way, Saltzman does, does not have any White Down Super Oceans 42 on their website. Um, that's because I bought, they were out of stock and they ordered more and they got one and they sent it to me. So, sorry. <laughs> Joseph says Colt, Colt 45. <laughs> yeah, just get the Colt 45, forget the watches. Uh, Mark says, anything that helps Detroit's economy is all right with me. And I'm sure it does. They employ a lot of people, um, even in-house versus, you know, there's, you got to think about, you got to go the next level out too from Shinola too. They're supporting a lot of other businesses in the community as well. And you have one that Obama had custom made for the flight crew. Detroit, you need to email me, dude. We need to talk. You got some cool watches. I want to talk to you some more. Uh, Nefarian says you can get the demagnetizer thing on Amazon, 13 bucks. It works wonders. Um, be careful with that, though. Lee Power says cheapest way into spring drive, question mark. Um, save up. <laughs> uh, check out Motor City Watch on Instagram. Let me write that down. Motor City Motor City Watch. Because there's a couple other, like, Motor City watch works and stuff like that. I don't know if that's you or not. I'll hit you up. What's the white G-Shock square? Have I not done the video on this one yet? I need to look back and see what I've done and what I haven't done. This was a, a limited edition. I forget what this one was called. It was a... I don't know. I don't know what these... <laughs> I get too many watches in, guys. I don't remember what these are. It's just a cool, fun G-Shock white one. I like the orange print on it. I don't remember what it is. I'm interested in the Super Ocean, but the value is plummet. Um, I don't know. If you buy them at discount, I don't think it will. I think you can do all right. This one retails at like four. You can probably pick them up at three. Um, and I think on any of these luxury watches that don't really, that's not a Rolex, right? Um, if you lose like 500 bucks, then you're, I think you're going to be all right. Uh, is, is, is Saltzman's reliable for servicing? For some reason, they have really bad reviews on Yelp. Uh, I've never sent anything for service from them, uh, but I've heard stories one way or the other, but I don't know. Best way to contact me on Instagram, I'll try to get... No, I'll, I'll hit you up on Instagram. Instagram works good for me, so... Hey, Wayne's here, the monster man. Um, still selling monsters, actually, too. He, he went upscale, though, too. I'm kind of doing the same, but Wayne's checking in. I wish uh, Joseph says he wish he had the NASA square. I had one, sold it, and I don't know if the guy that I sold it to still has it or not. 
Harold, do I like the Street Fighter line from Seiko? I think they look really cool. I'm not going to buy one, though. I'm not going to own one. I think they look cool, though. All of them are keepers? No. No watchers are keepers. The Orange Monster is a keeper. Yeah, the NASA Square was the one to have. Seems like it's going up in price. All right, guys, i got to sign off. But thanks for watching. Wait a minute. i got to at least go to 100 minutes. We're almost there. I'm not going to sign off until we hit 100 minutes. Waiting to, yeah, I'll have the initial D1 there. I hit, I hit 100 minutes. Longest live stream I've done. All right, guys. I'll see you uh, tomorrow. I'll do a video tomorrow.